Hello again, everyone. This is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus Dry Docks. Dot com and I'm excited to share with you the latest project that is going to be leaving the bench here from the dry docks. Uh, this is a Japanese Kairu midget submarine, a two-man submarine from World War II. A very cool boat. Uh, let's take a look. Well, now that you have seen the boat in the water, I'll give you some of my impressions, having been the one driving it in the swimming pool. Now, obviously, I couldn't get it up to uh, a massive amount of speed or check out turning radius completely because of the diminutive size of my testing facility. But I will say, based on what I saw at the pool, this is going to have actually a very impressive response to both pitch inputs and yaw inputs via the rudder. I don't see any problems going to be arising from lack of maneuverability of this boat, particularly once you get it submerged. Also, I do have to say that this boat is an absolute rocket underneath the water. Uh, this is more of like a, like almost like a racing prop on the back of the boat and it's paired up to a very robust drive line in that sub driver. The boat, I'm going to say, is probably going to be able to get up to somewhere around five or six miles an hour submerged, which is pretty significant. That combined with the fact that it's got that automatic pitch control means you can run it at high speed submerged runs with just that periscope sticking out of the top of the water in almost a hands off manner. I love this boat. I think it is going to be tons of fun for the new owner to operate. Uh, Tony in the UK is a very lucky gentleman. Congratulations on your purchase, Tony. Uh, for you and for everybody else, let's take a look at the technical details of this boat for those of you who are interested. So let's talk a little bit about the background of these really cool submarines. They were designed 
1943 to 1944, so approaching the latter half uh, of World War II, and then they were produced in 1945. And the idea was that they were going to defend the Tokyo Harbor from enroaching enemies. Uh, so really they didn't see a lot of action uh, in World War II. Uh, they were designed to carry two torpedoes uh, slung underneath on either side and they also had an onboard explosive charge designed for suicide missions. So that's exciting. So these boats, as you can see, were really long and they were really skinny. They were about 53 feet uh, in overall length and they had a beam of just over four feet. Uh, two people could fit in there and imagine it would be fairly tight. Uh, apparently there was a, a very late version, the Mod 3 version, that actually carried up to three people, but it was five feet longer than the previous ones. So this particular model found its way to me when the owner uh, sold to me a bunch of his boats uh, that he could no longer work on anymore due to some health issues. Um, beautifully put together and uh, David Merriman actually helped him with the assembly and setup of this particular boat and he may have had a hand uh, in the paint and weather which is why it looks so cool. Uh, when I got it, it uh, was completely painted and there was an old cylinder inside. Now what I decided to do was completely revamp the drive system for this boat, replace it with a modern subdriver that runs the semi-aspirated ballast system that is uh, air pump based. So this boat has a lot of very cool features inside. Let's take a look at that drive system that I just talked about. We'll show you what goes into this RC submarine. So as I mentioned, this is a, a brand new subdriver. Um, it's sort of the Gen 2 of the Subdriver line. There's a new line that's uh, currently out right now, but this is a very cool unit, all completely self-contained, including the battery compartment, the ballast compartment, and the main drive compartment. So we're gonna take a look at each one of the uh, sections there, the features that it has, and the guts that I put into it to make this uh, a very cool submarine. Starting at the uh, forward end of the cylinder, you can see I've got a big 3 amp lithium polymer battery that's in there. There's an inline 15 amp fuse to protect everything uh, in case of short circuit. And there's a waterproof switch on the front, which is how you turn everything on and off. Central section, uh, this is the ballast system. You can see uh, this is a valve that stops any water from being pulled through this ballast system and pumped into areas that it should not get to. I uh, got the linkages for the vent right there uh, and the plumbing for that uh, snorkel system that gets mounted in the tower of the boat. Uh, in the back we got our uh, main drive motor single shaft output and we've got three linkage outputs. One for the rudder, one for the mid-mounted dive planes and one for the aft mounted dive planes. The um, air pump is mounted in the front as are the three servos. We've got uh, an electronic speed controller in the bottom and then these two units on the side is an automatic pitch controller that automatically keeps the boat on an even keel. As you saw earlier, it does an exceptional job even at high speeds of keeping that boat operating at a perfectly even keel which makes it just a dream to drive. The other unit, the BLM or battery and link monitor unit, is the failsafe device. So it does two things. It matters it monitors the battery voltage and it monitors the signal coming from the transmitter. In either of those two cases, uh, if the battery drops too low or if signal somehow stops, the failsafe device will automatically blow ballast, bring the boat to the surface. So very, very worthwhile. I will say that this uh, cylinder in this iteration is uh, an absolute dream to work on. There's lots of room up front, uh, lots of room for the cables to bundle up so they're not all sandwiched in there and getting pinched by anything. 
And actually this ballast tank ended up being significantly larger than what the boat needed. The boat does not have a ton of freeboard at all. Uh, and actually it's probably about a quarter of an inch on the hull. As such, what I ended up actually having to do, and you can see them here, I've drilled some holes in the sides of the ballast tank, which effectively cuts the capacity of it in half. And uh, you want to do that to make sure that you get something approaching the correct surface water line uh, and you're not having uh, wasted air and energy uh, pumping more air than you absolutely need. So this is the uh, you know command and control system for the Kyger submarine. Let's take a look at the hull. So this is the, uh, the main model itself. It's a fiberglass construction with uh, resin detail pieces. The sail is uh, completely removable uh, to get access to the inside, which is where the snorkel intake is actually mounted. Uh, we've got all these really cool uh, piping details. And again, you'll notice that the, uh, the surfaced waterline is really, really high. And that actually makes it tricky to trim this boat out because you don't have access to interior space to mount flotation foam that is above the surfaced waterline of the boat. If you've checked out my uh, blog on trimming a submarine, or my numerous videos, uh, you'll see that that's actually important so that you can get uh, perfect submerged and surfaced water lines. Uh, one thing you'll notice here is that these forward dive planes are actually mounted almost at the center line of the boat. What that basically means is they have almost no effect on the pitch uh, and they're utilized almost exclusively to control the depth of the boat. Going to the back here, you can see some fairly substantial uh, rudders and uh, some nice dive planes, rear dive planes here, and uh, a big three-bladed propeller. And uh, as you saw from the video, this model really, really gets up and moves. Uh, it's got tremendous speed, and actually these control surfaces offer a great degree of control over the boat. It's an absolute dream to drive. All right, so let's talk about installation of that watertight cylinder that we just went through a few moments ago. Uh, first of all, obviously, we need to get into the boat, and uh, fortunately to do so is a fairly easy process. There is a stainless steel bolt uh, in the back. Once removed, allows you to pick up the hull and take it off. Uh, there's a little lip in the front that keeps the front locked down, and it is the bolt in the back that keeps the back locked down. Um, what we're going to do at this point, take our watertight cylinder and we're going to grab our um, drive shaft, these uh, aluminum drive shaft, make sure that that's seated uh, in the back of the boat. We're going to seat that in the adapter in the uh, drive shaft there. We're going to lower the sub driver into the hull and there's a little brass pin in the bottom of the hull that goes into a corresponding hole in the bottom of the ballast tank and that keeps everything aligned forward and back and stops the cylinder from rocking back and forth so you can see it is fairly tight in there. Looking at the back of the boat we've got some really cool magnetic linkages and they just snap directly on there and the cool thing about these is the uh, the two outputs have differing polarity so uh, for example these dive plane linkages can't attach to the rudder output they can only attached to the proper one. So there's our two linkages completely made up. No need to mess with clevises or anything like that. Um, here is the shaft for the uh, forward dive planes and those click right into place uh, on this U-shaped adapter. And then there's this brass sleeve that gets pushed forward and that keeps alignment between the two magnetic linkages. It just makes everything a lot cleaner. Some rubber O-rings that get pushed forward to keep that locked in place. And so looking at that, you can see that brass adapter right there locked in place by those O-rings. Now we need to uh, lock everything down in the hull to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. And to do that, we're gonna use uh, this fancy elastic band. I'm going to drape that over 
the one side. And the, the band actually goes underneath the linkage for the forward dive planes. And that locks everything in place. Can't move now. Um, we're gonna do the same at the front and our cylinder will be completely locked in place. All right, now that that's done, we need to run our um, receiver antenna. And you can see that this is uh, encapsulated in this rubber hose and the rubber hose has a little cap at the end. Uh, and as most of you know, if you followed my channel before, I do this for a reason because you could easily just run that receiver antenna out and call it a day. This is a little bit more work, but what it gives you is a little bonus in that you can take that self-contained cylinder out to your tub or your pond or your swimming pool, uncap this cork, submerge the cylinder, blow into it gently, and that is how you check for leaks. Uh, very, very important to do that before you run the boat every time you're going to do so. Um, but yes, running this, we're gonna simply run it along the side of that cylinder, tuck it where it's gonna be out of the way, and that is completely done and ready to go. Next step is to take our um, upper hull. We're gonna connect the um, snorkel intake to that quick connect that I mentioned earlier. And that just presses together twists to lock. Now one thing that you're going to want to do is tuck that up underneath the foam. There's like a little lip up here on top of that flotation foam block. Tuck it up there so it stays out of the way. And then when you drop this down, nothing gets in the way. Nothing gets in the way and you're ready to go. So obviously before we seal it up, we want to check it and make sure that everything is functional before we go to the pond. So I'm going to turn my transmitter on and turn the cylinder on. Seems like something happened there. Let's check all of the functions of the boat. We've got our forward dive planes going on there. We've got our rudder. We've got our um, aft dive planes and those by the way are running off of that pitch controller so you can see as I move that tail up uh, and down those planes work to keep the boat level. A um, little bit of throttle. That is incredibly smooth by the way that works really really good and the ballast system we can check our uh, vent and our pump and you got to listen for it. And there we go. Everything appears to be functional. We can put the top back on the model, bring it to the pond, and we will be ready to go. So one thing that I would like to show you before we move on to the next part here is the functionality of this battery and link monitor. I think that uh, is really cool. So let's, uh, let's turn the module on. You can see that uh, my battery is a little low because I was trimming it out here. It's showing about a 75% uh, charge on that battery. Um, what I am going to do now is test the fail safe functionality of the boat by turning off the transmitter, faking a loss of signal event while the boat is submerged. So the cool thing about the battery and link monitor is you can set exactly what happens. So in this particular case, I've configured it in such a manner that when the boat detects a lack of signal, it'll wait for four seconds, just in case it's just an aberration or a little bit of confusion on the channel. It doesn't blow the ballast tank inadvertently. So it'll wait for four seconds and then it will blow ballast. It'll pump air into that ballast tank and it'll do that for about six seconds and then it'll stop. So let's check that functionality and see what happens here. Turning it off. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that is it. 
perfectly functioning fail-safe device would bring that model back up to the surface, where in theory you would be able to reestablish radio communications or at the very least uh, find out where it is so you can retrieve it manually. Well, there you go, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this brief overview about this Japanese midget submarine, the Kairu or Sea Dragon. My name is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the NautilusDryDocks.com. If you like what you see, by all means, please subscribe. I put out videos on a regular basis. Check out my website. I do do a live talk about RC submarines once a month, and that time uh, is posted on the homepage of my site. I hope to see you there. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll catch you next time.